But what do you make of this? I mean, is it this sort of ad hominem attacks on the on the Fed on the Fed chair? Well, fiscal policymakers typically don't comment on monetary policy and vice versa. But we've seen that decorum sort of thrown out the window on both sides. The president being a little more personal in his attacks directly on the Fed chairman, but more broadly, he's talking about the Fed potentially raising rates too fast, undermining the recovery, something that all politicians should be worried about. But remember, the Fed also has been very vocal, very critical of fiscal policy, pointing to tax policy, trade, rising budget deficits as potential very large mm -hmm. downside risks for the economy. So there have been pretty much a, a specific attacks and focus on both okay, sides. Okay, well, uh, listen, I know the Fed is, is theoretically independent, but mm -hmm. hey, listen, peer pressure matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a 14-year-old or whatever. So I know you've studied Jay Powell. Do you think he will be swayed at all? in his thinking on rates by this kind of stuff? Absolutely not. I'm going to give the Fed the credit to say that they are professionals. They are a very intelligent, smart, well-trained economists. They know what they're doing, and they're going to be focusing on the data, and that's going to be driving their policy decisions. They will not be swayed by political comments from the president or from any other political figure. What is it, no, almost December here in 2018? By mid-2020, will the U.S. economy be in recession? I think the probability of a recession pushes north of 50% as we look out to 2020. Well, Absolutely. That, well, north of 50 could be 51 or could be 99. Well, I, I'm, I'm parsing words here, but I do think it's actually closer to about 60-65%. Okay, so still a good chance we're not. Well, glass half full, absolutely. But well, three, in our thirds empty. <laughs> in our official <laughs> forecast, we do see growth slowing dramatically through 2019 with the risk of recession really coming in play in the first half of 2020. Again, as I talked about, above 50 percent. But if I had to put a number on it, I'd say it's closer to about 60, 65 percent. I know that you like charts. So we, uh, who doesn't, like, who doesn't charts? like charts? Here's a good chart. <laughs> if you're on the radio, I apologize. We have a 12 year chart of consumer confidence because you put out a note about the shopper and we're getting all this data. It's kind of mixed. It's like some things may be weaker over the Black Friday, but then others say, don't worry, because shopping has simply shifted mm -hmm. that our time frame when we shop mm -hmm. doesn't really matter like it used to. No offense to Black Friday. Consumer confidence is still super high. Right. Lindsay. Well, historically, remember, consumer confidence pretty much gave us a good indication of what shoppers were doing. Now that relationship has pretty much broken down. We see confidence still very high, but we, we look at actual discretionary purchases via retail sales, a lot of volatility. That volatility not translating into the confidence figures. Confidence, as you mentioned, still very high. But when we look at August and September, what happened to spending? What, it was what negative. Happen? Well, what happened? Back to back months of negative retail spending. Consumers are actually more concerned about their financial footing than they're letting on, than they're reporting in Will these confidence figures. Will it be a good figures. holiday shopping season when all is said and done? I think it's going to be a modest shopping season. I think consumers were out spending like gangbusters on the internet over Thanksgiving mm -hmm. holiday, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. But when we look at foot traffic, Cyber Monday. You owe me a dollar. You owe me a dollar for saying Cyber Monday too, because you said it twice.